Hey everyone, my name is Gary. Welcome to Woodwind Doubling. Today, we're going to talk specifically about time management. If you've chosen to start doubling on woodwind instruments, odds are you are already aware that you've chosen to double, triple, quadruple, even quintuple your workload, depending how many horns that you're playing these days. Which means we need to budget our practice sessions very carefully. So today, we're going to talk about what to play in your practice session, how long to stay on it, and how to keep it interesting. Because that matters too, doesn't it? Let's get started. Your daily regimen on each instrument, and that is each instrument. Each instrument needs equal time. Your daily regimen on each instrument is going to contain warm-ups, scales and chord studies, etudes and repertoire, and lastly, transposition and improvisation. All I start my practice session with long tones. Nice, simple, long sounds. We need long tones because we have to get better at using our air effectively and with intention. Our tongue, our lips, and our jaw all need to be set up for our practice session, and long tones helps us do that. All three of those things, tongue, jaw, and lips, directly affect your tone and sound, both independently and together. Your tongue shapes and sizes the air column and controls the air on the exhale. Your jaw supports your sound without interfering with the tone. And your lips, depending on the instrument, clarinet, saxophone, they help to control the vibration of the reed among support your tone and everything else. And on flute, especially important, your lips help control the octave because you have no octave key or register key on your flute. My favorite long tone exercise comes from De La Sonorte by Marcel Moise. This is a great book that every flute player should own. Don't forget to keep your long tones interesting. We're human beings. We're going to get bored. It's just what we do. You can play your long tones chromatically, like I just did. You can also use scales, slow, long tone scales. And that's a way to diversify, to keep these long tones interesting, because they are necessary. Next, let's talk about scales. You've been playing scales since you were in elementary school, probably. But now you're a doubler. And as a doubler, you need to feel comfort across all of your horns. But here, we're going to use scales for comfort with hand position and fingerings. Scales help with that. Do your scales and keep it interesting. Major scales, minor scales, diminished scales, bebop scales, any scale. Pick a scale for the week and go with it. Sometimes you can do different scales on different horns, even better. Keep it interesting, but do your scales. Currently, during this particular summer of 2020 when I'm making this video, my scale regiment involves a legato scale, a rhythm scale, and a staccato scale. Here's a quick example of my current scale study. Okay. 
Did I mention you should play your scales in all keys? All keys. Trust me. Next, etudes and repertoire. However many instruments you're currently working on, each one of those instruments should have a dedicated etude book and repertoire piece that you're currently working on. This is for your expressiveness, for your technique, for your fundamentals, for your tone, for your air use, everything. These are things where you're really digging into the details. If you're not sure where to find etudes and repertoire, here are a few places to get you started. IMSLP is absolutely fantastic. There's hundreds and thousands of pieces in the public domain for all instruments. Scribed is another great one if you or your educational institution has the subscription to it. It does require a subscription. I believe there's a 30-day free trial that you can squeak by with. Go to social media. What are the musicians that you follow playing? Play those things. You do follow other musicians on social media, don't you? Even if you think that they're too hard, try them. Lastly, transposition and improvisation. Now look, if you're classically trained like I am, this is an absolutely terrifying concept but it's gonna be one of the most liberating experiences for you because you're getting off the page, so to speak. Transcribing and improvisation help train your ears and help you hear in multiple keys because you're listening, you're really listening. We have many keys. Flute is in C, piccolo as well, of course. Clarinets are in B flat for the most part. Saxophones are pitched in B flat and E flat. There's a lot of keys that we have to hear in. Don't even get me started on how the alto flute is in the key of G. So transcribe and improvise. It is worth your while. I know, I know. Where do you even begin? Start with simple songs, pop songs, songs from commercials. <laughs> Graduate yourself to jazz solos that don't scare you, jazz musicians that you may already like. Start small. You don't have to do an entire John Coltrane epic 10 chorus solo right off the bat. You can do just the first 30 seconds. You can do a small chunk here and there. Start small. Really, it is going to be so worth your while. Transcribing can be intimidating if you're a classical musician at first. My advice to you is trust yourself. Just listen, listen, listen. Improvisation is another one of those things that is absolutely terrifying if you're a classically trained musician. I highly recommend the iReal Pro app, which is free on most mobile devices, I believe. On the computer, I believe it's a paid app. Check your app store and find out for yourself, but improvise. Okay, let's recap. Your daily practice routine, warm-ups, scales and chords, etudes and repertoire, improvisation and transcription. 15 to 20 minutes of each of these per instrument. I can't stress enough, equal time for each instrument, equal time. You are a doubler. The goal is no one knows what your primary is anymore. Please don't forget, we're real people. We have jobs, we go to school, we have families. We have lots to do every day. Some days you're gonna get everything, every step of your daily regimen. Some days you're not. Speaking of which, Know what gig you have coming up next. What do you need to prioritize? Is your next gig a musical? Are you playing Reed 3 for Beauty and the Beast? Then I would definitely put down the piccolo and put down the saxophone and pick up your flute, clarinet, and bass clarinet. Is your next gig in a jazz band playing baritone sax? 
then I would definitely practice your improvisation and transcribing on baritone sax. It depends on you and what you're playing right now. So never forget that. What are you playing right now and what is your priority? Another great book to have in your library that I've referenced here and there today, Woodwind Doubling by Edward Jaffe. I'm gonna show his name here. This is a great book with lots of research, references, examples, and real world experience. Definitely check out this book and keep it in your library. Thank you all for watching today. I'll see you in my next video. Be safe and be well.